This would be a perfect first car, man. Perfect. Oh! Oh, yeah. I love it. That's actually pretty good. Toot the horn. <laughs> I've got nothing else to add to that. Hey, Jacob. Hey, Matt. What are we driving today? Oh, it's a brand new MG5. You know, it's funny. MG didn't want anyone to review the MG5. And frankly, I have no idea why. It's a bit weird. This is Australia's cheapest new sedan. It is one of Australia's cheapest new cars, full stop. And it is unbelievably good. Genuinely. I, I don't think you guys understand. Like, I mean it. This thing is unreal. We're gonna tell you everything you need to know about it, including some of the things you don't get and probably why MG didn't want too much press about this, but they're silly not to, because it's amazing. And as part of that, we'll take you for an exterior tour of the MG5. We're gonna move on to the interior, check that out. Also the practicality, of course. We're gonna drive this thing, because that is one of the most surprising things about this car, and we're gonna launch it as well, which frankly also blew our minds. And of course, we will have a full written article about the MG5 live on our website as well. So make sure you check that out, castles.com. We'll link it in the description below. Jacob. Let's do it. Let's review this thing. Thank you to today's video sponsor, Wipertech. Wipertech sell high quality and durable wiper blades delivered straight to your door. Designed for all Aussie conditions, these blades fight rust, reduce wind lift, and glide smoothly thanks to their aerodynamic design and Teflon embedded rubber. They're easy to install, offer a perfect fit guarantee, and backed by a full 12 month warranty. Click the link below and use code CARSOURCE15 during checkout to get 15% off your order plus free express shipping. Thanks to Wipertech for sponsoring today's video. Alrighty, so starting with the exterior looks of the MG5. Jacob, what do you think? Dude, it's pretty aggressive at the front, I gotta say. It's a really cool look. You can definitely tell they've had some uh, Hyundai influence here with the catfish grill, but it's got some really cool elements to it there as well. And as I always say, Jacob, if you're gonna copy, copy the good stuff. Yeah, imitation is flattery. Check out these headlights here. They do have a really cool daytime running lights to them. LED turning signals. You wouldn't even see that at this price point. I don't know how they've afforded it here. Every manufacturer should do that though. Very bright LED lights there too. You've also got the MG badge. Jacob, let's come to one of the, uh, I guess, worst things about this car, which is that to keep it at this price point, this MG5 doesn't come with really any active safety technology. It does have all the passive safety stuff. So you still get six airbags bags and you know it's all obviously designed for crash resistance but it doesn't have like autonomous emergency braking or well, actually it has a form of that which is forward collision warning which will warn you when you know there's a car that you're about to crash into but it won't actually brake for you honestly man like you can live without that we've we've lived without that up until like 2020. I think at this point and at this price point it's acceptable, but as we go more into the future, it's gonna become less and less acceptable. Totally agree. You can let us know though in the comment section, what do you think about the lack of adaptive cruise control and lane centering, things like that. Down the bottom you have a carbon fiber vinyl wrap, which is pretty uh, funny, but almost fitting because of the power of this engine. And we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. You've also got some functional aero here to streamline air down the side. Jacob, why don't we just talk about the side? Let's do it. I've somehow already forgotten to mention pricing. This thing here starts at just under 25 thousand Australian dollars drive away for the Vibe trim. Then you've also got the Essence trim, which is what we have here. That's just under 29 thousand Australian dollars. And the difference is the engine mainly. We'll come back to that when we're driving this thing. But being the top spec Essence here, Jacob, which is definitely the one you should get by the way, you've got these two-tone 17 inch alloy wheels with some decent Maxxis rubber on them too quite thick, which should help with ride quality, but we'll see when we drive this thing. You have a camera here because this thing has a 360 camera. At 29 grand. Doesn't matter that it's a little bit on the poo end. It's the thought that counts, you get it. Um, also, Jacob, keyless entry and go, except you can only do that from the driver's side. But when you do, you can play a ballad when the car is on, you've left the key inside and you're trying to lock the car. We're the most musical car reviewers out. Play, play the clip now. <laughs> You also get a sunroof as part of the Essence trim along with that 360 camera. No tinted privacy glass, but like seriously, would you expect at this price point? Also, Jacob, this has to be like the most coopy, swoopy sedan in the world. Yeah, it definitely bears some resemblance to like a CLA or something. Yeah, I can say that. It's got that... 
fly. So I'm getting mauled by these flies. Jacob, let's talk about the bum. Let's do it. And then coming to the bum of the MG5, you're gonna see these really cool 3D effect tail lights. Oh, you know what it looks like? What does it look A like? Genesis G70. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that angle downwards. Guys, we've been thinking about this all day. We're like, what does this look like? That's what it is. Uh, MG badge there too. MG5 turbo badge because yes, the Essence gets the turbo engine which is uh, really powerful, but we'll come back to that. Um, down the bottom, you also get a diffuser with some of the world's uh, most fake exhausts. And Jacob, why don't we just show the people what it sounds like? I don't know why we're doing this. Play the clip. Let's quickly talk about practicality, because when you see like the practicality on the inside, you're gonna be really shocked by this. So we open it up. Pops open, you've got some gooseneck style things here. Eats into a little bit of space, but you get plenty of room on the inside, like a stupid amount. It's actually really good. I wasn't expecting this kind of boot on what looks like a coupe. No, seriously, you, you wouldn't expect it. Um, under here, you have a Space Saver spare wheel. You can also drop the rear seats. It does fold as one piece, so you can't have anyone sitting in the back if you do want to drop that. But again, who cares? It's so cheap. Let's check out the interior. Alrighty, so coming into the interior now of one of Australia's cheapest cars. Jacob, how does it feel? Doesn't feel like one of Australia's cheapest cars. I'll tell you that. Sincerely not. Let's, let's start with the bad. We always start with the good. Let's start with the bad, right? Okay. Scratchy materials in a lot of places, which isn't great for reflecting road noise. Um, that's it. Look, it's, again, it's not perfect, but considering the competition, it's really good. So I really like this leather steering wheel. Feels really nice to hold in the hands. You've also got buttons here to control your digital instrument cluster up in front of you, which actually has a lot of menus. Yeah, look, it's not the crispest, most high definition thing, but it's got plenty of customizability. And one of the things it tells you is your fuel economy, which we've been averaging low sevens. That's ridiculous. When you see the performance of this, you'll be very surprised, just like we were. The design itself, it's not boring. You've got this like Tetra Prism design here, this brushed aluminium look, it's not real. And the whole driver focus layout with like your infotainment screen angled towards you. You know, it doesn't feel like it's just been kind of thrown together last second. It actually feels like, I don't know, like a really nice car. Genuinely, I actually think the different textures and different materials used everywhere makes the whole interior look interesting. The other thing is that the attention to detail in MGs is getting better and better each new model they release. The buttons here, they're all lined up perfectly. And listen to the sound, Jacob. That's pretty good. It's not just like membrane switches. They've got like literal mechanical switches behind this. Like that's a small attention to detail. I don't think I've seen that in cars like outside of Audi. Um, so really, really impressed with that. Unfortunately though, if you want to access your climate controls, for example, you do have to use the infotainment display. I mean, I say unfortunately, but it's actually absolutely fine to use. Super snappy, works really, really well. You've got wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which I'm not upset about at this price point especially. And also all wireless chargers just seem to heat up your phone. I agree, and they don't really charge your phone they much. Never, they just kind of keep it on the same battery. They just make it never real charge hot. it. They just make it really hot and just degrade the battery. Anyway, rant over. Um, a really good screen, high definition, definitely one of the best you'll see at this price point. You've also got a couple of USB-A ports and a 12 volt socket, a little storage area up here too. We, we can't not mention the um, old BMW-esque sh shifter. Who cares? Gets the job done. Who cares? Who cares? You got a couple of cup holders here that work totally fine. The center armrest is a nice and soft faux leather. And then inside you get actually a decent amount of storage. Speaking of, this glove box is absolutely massive and the door bins are a decent size. And by the way, while they use hard plastics up here, here it's all nice and soft. So the places that you actually touch and that matter are the ones that are soft, which is important. As I said, we have the essence trim here, and as part of that, we get this sunroof up top, which I'm always a big fan of. The thing I was a bit worried about getting in here was the fact that the steering wheel, it doesn't have any reach adjustment, but it does have tilting. So I thought, oh God, here we go with the seats. Um, very comfortable. Genuinely, and actually the front of the car feels very spacious. It does. It, it really feels. feels like you're in a sedan. Yeah, like a, a bigger car. It doesn't feel like one of those small hatchbacks at this price point. The seats are made of this like faux leather, but they've got a lot of um, padding and cushioning to them. And we've done um, quite a few hours of driving today and it hasn't been tiring at all, at all. It's a really nice place to be. I don't know, man, I am, I'm really pleased. I'm, I'm really shocked. impressed. I didn't expect it. Um, I really didn't expect this, but very, very impressed. Me oh, too forgot to mention sound system it's okay it's pretty good it's pretty beefy bass yeah it's a yamaha 3d sound system 
whatever it sounds that made up whatever that means the other thing as well is these seats they have automatic adjustment at least on the driver's side in the essence trip but like come on man that's awesome yeah and lumbar adjustment too oh and lumbar adjustment let's check out the back seats jacob my interest is peaked in the back as well <laughs> why because okay let's talk about this right it's a bit of a cyclops it's got one of event one that's a little strange so if you have three people in the back let's just say you're gonna have a 3v1 for that aircon vent. Um, a bit weird, but you know what? At least you get it. A lot of cars at this price point, they don't plumb the air conditioning into the back, so that's something. Got a USB-A port there as well, and of course, a little bit of storage. Jacob, let's talk about the comfort in the back because that's what shocked me the most. Um, you get a, a surprising amount of space in the back because this car is, it's not small, but it's not huge. It's like 4.7 meters long. So you've got a decent amount of leg room, a decent amount of toe room, and headroom is actually surprisingly great because you get a little cutout in the roof because this thing is a real coopy coop. So um, I thought there would be no space in the back for me at 5'11", but sitting behind myself, I'm totally happy. And as I said, my legs are at a good angle. The seats back here are the same faux leather as up front. They feel totally fine. Actually quite supportive in the back there too. No center armrest, which is a bit of a shame. But again, it's like I'm, I just, I really struggle to fold this car when you consider everything. Jacob, let's drive it. Let's do it. Alrighty, friend. Let's get the bat out of the way. That. <laughs> it's takeoff with this transmission. So uh, we get a seven speed dual clutch here, Jacob. Sporty goodness. But let me tell you, you want this transmission because it's the one that comes with the better engine, the 1.5 liter turbo petrol. Puts out an absolute crap load of power. 119 kilowatts. 250 newton meters of torque. That's a decent chunk of power. You can also get it with the same four cylinder, one and a half liter, but it, it's naturally aspirated, um, which is what you'd find in like an MG3, and it puts out uh, significantly less power. Yeah, 84 kilowatts, 150 newton meters. God, you're good. This one though, you put your foot down. Genuinely takes like a couple of seconds, but it goes. But it's pretty fast, man. <laughs> it is fast. <laughs> what the f and you know what? It's actually very easy to forget that this car is under $30,000. It's so easy to forget. Um, this is probably one of my favorite, like, honestly, one of my favorite engines at this price point. Like, under 30 grand is what I would say. What did they do? Okay, wait, I'm going to put the steering in dynamic. It tightens up a bit. Ooh, yeah. Wow. This thing drives really well. Genuinely. <laughs> and it's not like it's uncomfortably tuned. No. It still kind of floats, but it does have good handling when you want it to. Yeah, so let's drop a gear. It actually drops pretty quick. Man, yeah. this engine is so, um, like this is warm hatch performance. Like it actually genuinely feels fast, guys. You, you wouldn't believe it. Oh, what did I call it? It's not a bloody hatch. Did I call it a hatch? Not every car is a hatchback or an SUV oh, these days. Man. Thank God, under this price point. Let's see how it goes around these corners though. So we do have the steering in dynamic mode. There aren't any sport modes. Well, actually there is an eco driving button, which I assume makes it Slimits eco. The revs, maybe. Um, but the steering itself is actually very heavy in dynamic mode. The handling is unbelievably good. Like it doesn't understeer for a front wheel drive. No, there is no limited slip differential. It is just an open differential. You put your foot down. It's nice and responsive actually at high speeds. Oh yeah. This is like unbelievably close to a hot hatch without being a hot hatch, which is just seriously unreal. Like I'm, I'm, in, I'm in genuine shock. I will say though, and I'm doing this on purpose, we come to a stop and you put your foot down. Yeah, see what I mean? It's just not, it's it's not the most, um, it's it's not the most pleasant transmission in the world, but I, honestly, I forgive it. Yeah. But around town, it does get annoying. As someone that's been living with this car for the last week, driving it around town, it's a little bit annoying. And it does feel like there's only two modes, either go or go very slow. Oh, hang on. Let's see how it goes around here though. But then you take it out here and you're like, oh, I don't even care. No. It's actually great. And it's livable as well, is what That's I would true. say. Like 30 grand, come on. Oh, I feel like at that point it's almost nitpicking. What's your it, other no, option? True. CVT almost everywhere else. That is true. 
Okay, let's go up saucy corner. Oh, it's time to give it some sauce, Jacob. Are you ready? No, are you ready? Tickle my little pickle. Let's break boost launch it up here. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, do you oh, know what? Goodness. Obviously it broke traction, um, but it hooked up after pretty well. Jeez, it gets, <laughs> this thing's fast, man. Here we go. All right, that guy just cut the corner. Uh, Whoever you are, you suck. You ruined our saucy corner. No, he didn't. This is the big one. Oh God, the second hairpin. Oh God. Oh, it cut oh, power. Yeah. It's cutting power. Traction control, why? <laughs> I will say that we had the body stability control mode in normal. Maybe in sport it would have been a bit more forgiving. God, that's loud. That was really loud. Um, one other thing I don't love in here is it's, it's you can hear a lot of road. I completely agree, especially on road like this, like the course chip. All right, Jacob, let's uh, let's launch it. Let's do it. All right, friend, it's time to launch the MG5. We're going to put body stability control in sport this time. <sighs> let's break Bruce. Oh, should we turn that that off? Should we turn that bad boy off? No, because otherwise it'll just spin its wheels constantly. Fair enough. Let's small brake boost launch it. You're going to fist me, you're going to fist me good. A bit more, a bit more. Okay. Hey, that was a pretty good launch. Not bad. By me. <laughs> well done, Matt. That zero to 60 kilometers an hour is pretty fast. Ooh. Mate, for such a cheap car, that is pretty phenomenal. Zero to 100 in 8.5. Five, two seconds. That's actually pretty good. Toot the horn. Let's uh, let's get into our final thoughts. Let's. Alrighty, Jacob. So, final thoughts on the MG5. Frankly, I can't believe that MG weren't going to add this to their press fleet because I love it. This thing's bonkers for the price. For the price, like this would be a perfect first car, man. Perfect. Seriously, it's it's like. One of my favorite complete packages under 30 grand. I, I probably couldn't name you another one. Maybe a Mazda 2, but even that is literally like the same price for a base model. And if you think about it, there's not many options for sedan There aren't. Anymore. It's literally just the Mazda 2 at that price point. Or maybe an i30 sedan, but you will be getting the base model with a worse drivetrain, so. And I feel like it's not even as well equipped as this car. Honestly, no. But let us know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What do you think of the MG5? And again, if you want to read our full written article, head to our website, carsource.com. Linked it down below. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.